T-Bro in the morning, Laura Styles and Rosenberg. Give it up. Midge Purse representing Gotham FC right here in the New York, New Jersey area. Big game uh, coming this uh, Sunday. Uh, Midge, how are you? I'm good. I'm excited for I said, our game. I said your last name correctly? Purse. Purse, yeah. Purse. That's it. Um, thanks for coming by the show. Um, I have not been to a National Women's Soccer League game as of yet. Okay, we can um, change that. But I need to make that happen for my daughter, for sure. Daughter? For you? What's, yes. what's wrong with you? Well, and for me, <laughs> but also for my, you know, I have a nine-year-old, so it's okay. like she would be locked in. She loves it. She good. loves it. She loves soccer, too. Oh, amazing. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a good game. We're really good. We're about to go into playoffs. We need to win to make sure that we go in, but we can get in with a little bit less, but we don't talk about that. But, well, because, yeah, we're not. You focus on the win. Because yeah, yeah, we're going to win. Yeah, yeah. Focus yeah. on the win. <laughs> How long have you been on uh, Gotham FC? I've been on Gotham, I think, for three years. So I came from Portland. I got traded from Portland. Before that, I was at Boston. But I, I really love Gotham. Gotham's amazing. Portland's amazing. They have a great, great fan base there, too. They are very good. They call it Soccer City. Yeah. Yeah, not a lot to compete with, though. They right, because there's it. no other sports. Well, they, they, have, they, the well, trail they have the Trailblazers, trail right. but you don't have, like, the Jets. I mean, right. the Jets. But, you know, the Jets, the, the Giants, the yeah. two 19 different teams. teams. Yeah, three, yeah. three hockey teams. You know, yeah, <laughs> Everything, all that. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, now, the, the sport is growing super fast. Uh, not just women's soccer, which has always had a lot of respect around the world, uh, but just soccer in America in general is growing really fast. Absolutely. I feel like after every World Cup, because the Women's World Cup every four years happens, and after every World Cup, everyone's like, this is the time for women's soccer. But this time, it actually feels like it's the time for women's soccer. I mean, women are the top consumers, <clears throat> the top, top producers of content creation. And I think right now, everyone's starting to actually just like recognize that there's so much here. What, were you a soccer baby? Like, was it from the very beginning? Because I have a three-year-old and I just started putting her in soccer and really? she's like super into it. But I know that there's some people start from really, really young and some people get into it later on. Like, what's your story? No, I like did karate and I figure skated. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, and I played outside my brother. I played outside with my brother and my he played baseball. And my dad was a baseball coach. I didn't get into it until a lot later. Okay. Um, and I just fell in love. I was like, this is sick. Um, you're from Silver Spring, Maryland? Yeah, DMV. Where exactly in Silver Spring? Uh, what do you mean, Silver Spring? No, where exactly? Like I, what street? I don't tell you my address. I mean, you know, but there's different areas of Silver Spring. I mean, there's there's, there's different... Where did you go to high school? How about that? Our Lady of Good Counsel. Oh, you went to Good Counsel. Where did you... Wait, did you I went to BCC. Did you? Yeah, you, I'm not just randomly asking you about Silver Spring. Um, yeah, yeah, I went to BCC. So Good Counsel's a private school. Um, they're pretty good soccer team, right? We were amazing. Yeah, that's what I thought. Always very good, right? <laughs> yeah, we were. So no good. One How was your high school? You guys saw? <laughs> well, our our girls' sports are very good, and no one wants to see our field hockey. We're like the best. We're known for field hockey. That's yeah. BCC's Toting thing. field hockey. Yes. Okay. Don't you? Oh, you're gonna disrespect? Whoa. Yo, that's so crazy. No, I love this. It was an nobody choice. celebrates field well, hockey. Well, listen. It was interesting choice. Just, our, hold on. Our boys' soccer team is pretty good. I don't know if our girls' soccer team is particularly now we're on good the now. Boys' soccer team. Right? But our, I'm just saying <laughs> the field hockey mad. program. I, I know. Jeez, yeah, Louise. We, we, we beat you guys. <laughs> where would you? Where would you have gone to high school if you didn't go to private school? Do you know? Um. Blair? Yes. It would have been Blair. How did you know? Uh, <laughs> the aforementioned being from Silver Spring. <laughs> were you, where were you? I'm from, I was born at Holy Cross Hospital. I grew up in Chevy Chase. I went to Bethesda Chevy Chase. Oh, nice. But I mean, I know, I lived in Silver Spring. I was born at Holy Cross too. Were you? Yeah. Hey, you were born 16 years after me, but yeah, you were born. <laughs> Maybe same room. Um, <laughs> uh, exactly, who knows? Um, how, how do I ask this gently? No, not, go, go in hard. Not the national team result you were looking for. Yeah. Um, and the criticism of your team is always through the roof for many reasons that we all know why. Uh, people have made their political decisions about the women's national team. Absolutely. Um, and because you guys stand for things like, you know, uh, justice, social justice, <laughs> rights, LGBTQ plus rights, what every sort of bit of inclusion. You're on the right side of history. How yeah, it's yeah. just good people who who like. Yeah, it. you're on the right side of history, so obviously <laughs> that means people who are in a different uh, viewpoint always have a problem. But then, of course, you guys came up short this year. 
So you had this like double whammy of like people hating on you because they hate, and then also the legitimate disappointment because you guys are seen as the best team in the world. Mm -hmm. um, how was that experience and how difficult was that like inside the locker room for you guys to come up short? Yeah, well, so I tore my quad right before the World Cup, so I wasn't in Australia, but I, that team is so important to me. I still feel part of that team. Um, so you had to watch it just from afar? Yeah, it was pretty horrible. <laughs> yeah, that must be a double whammy of like you can't help and right. it's not going the way you Yeah, it wasn't great and I really felt for I mean, those are my friends. Like I really felt for a lot of them and what was going on and then to also hear from our own country, you know, here we are on the biggest global stage, like international football, and your own country has a lot of negative things to say about you guys like representing you. Um I would say it's hard, but it's not that hard. Like it's just it's disappointing. It's one of those things where it's just like, this is reality, this is how divided our nation is, this is how divided we are, and just like social issues, political issues, economic issues, healthcare, um, and there's just, there's not much more that you can do about it. it. What's the thing that you see said the most about the team, the women, the national team, that annoys you? Like a, a common oh. thing that's said? Because there's so, Ebro, when it was happening, there's you, a lot. you look on Twitter and every time there's an article, the, the responses to it, I just feel like everyone always has something smart to say. So about, you mean, you seem, are you guys saying that mean people yep. <laughs> are being mean when they have an opportunity to be mean to people? Yeah, and, and, and particularly in a space where there's so much room for them to be mean because like you have soccer, which for a lot of people in this country, they refuse to accept that it's sort of seen as some sort of elitist international game, even though literally every kid seems to play soccer. Then you have the fact that, you know, Megan Rapino in particular, but others as well have been so outspoken on these issues. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have the fact that you lost. And even though they wouldn't celebrate if you won, that's the best part. They wouldn't yeah. celebrate you if you won because all you guys do is generally win. Well, I yeah. guess the reason I said it the way I said it is because at How a certain is point you have to go, we don't even give a shit about these people. Like, right. We don't get it. And I guess not, that's It's true. not even important. And I think that's where you say, like, yeah. it's hard, but it's not really because you... Yeah, how could you be listening you to them in the first place? And you have tons of people who love you even more for what you stand for. For sure, but like, yeah, exactly. It's it's disappointing, but it is what it is. You right. know, I feel like everyone in that locker room is there because they're built different. Like, you don't get there without being built for taking in that kind of criticism, whether it's justified or not. And so, it just is what it is. Nobody really cares. Um, Can you? Oh, that's <laughs> well, I love hearing that. Good. <laughs> Can you talk about developing the um, the uh, the Black Women's Player Collective that you did in I think early 2000? Uh, 2020. 2020. Oh, 2020. Yeah, yeah no, that um, is really special to me. Uh, I founded the Black Women's Player Collective in 2020 at a time where, you know, the world was going through a lot. It was an unfavorable time in terms of just social issues, George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, but then you also had the global health pandemic that was happening and we didn't really know how to deal with that at the time. And then professional issues, our league was dealing with players deciding whether or not they wanted to kneel during the anthem and that ended up being a huge issue within our sport. And all of this while we're while we're in a bubble in Utah and it's like 100 degrees and nobody really wants to be there. That's where you guys, it was the Utah bubble? It was the Utah bubble on turf. Oh. <laughs> wow. Yeah, wow. It, it, was, it was a hard time. But like all in all, basically what happened was we were in this point where everyone was asking a lot of the black players in the league, how do, what are your thoughts and experiences and your feelings about being black in America and more so being black in this sport? And a lot of answers were given, like we gave answers. And the reaction to those answers were really dismissive or honestly just emotionally contrarian to what, whatever we were saying. So we got to this point where it was like, okay, you asked me what the weather is outside. I said it was raining. You said it's not, it's fine. I'm gonna go get an umbrella. Right. <laughs> you can just go outside. Well so we, said. we decided to found the Black Women's Player Collective, and we said we're gonna address what issues and concerns we have within our game and within this society in the best way we know how, and that was what we did. You must have had a really unique experience too because um, in my limited experience around soccer mm -hmm. and seeing it in high school, and, and I grew up in Montgomery County, so I guess I have some, I have some, <laughs> some understanding of what your life was like. I do think of it as being pretty white, white bread um, yeah. in general. And I have to imagine that there, you've been in a lot of situations as you were rising in the ranks in which you were the black girl or one of the few. So like, what was that experience like in general dealing with being other 
in that situation? Yeah, I mean, that's that's what we said. <laughs> that's what we explained, and that experience is what we explained. And honestly, because that was my situation a lot of the time, it was normal to me. That's what I knew, and I'm able to deal with that environment and that, that dynamic. Um, that being said, I do wish it was different. I wish that... You know, I hate saying like diversity and DEI because it's such a buzzword these days. And I I'm like, yeah, do you even mean it, or are you it just saying yeah, words? Like it feels just, gimmicky. Yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's, it's like just... mental health. It's just a <laughs> word people say. Well, and people, and, and the frustrating thing um, is, are you really ready to do the work? Like you're talking about it, but it's not like you just flip a switch and everything's fixed. Like it's has. Now to you be, have to work to do it. Do work, and yeah. you have to be open, and you got to do more work, and you got to learn more. And it's not something. And for black folks, that's our life. And we've also had to learn about the being the other. So we have to learn about everyone else, but nobody has to learn about us. And so then when it's time for people to learn about us, it's like they want to do it in a day. Right. And Can you give like, me the okay, lowdown? Let's just move on now. Can we just move on? Can we get over this? Right. That's not a reality. He said it. <laughs> it's just it. not. Yeah, I get it. And I'm yeah. guessing, I'm guessing knowing, knowing what soccer is like, and again, I'm generalizing, mm -hmm. relative to other sports, and again, I'm saying relative to other sports, I would say the soccer community leans more progressive than a lot of other sports that exist. Certainly football, oh, yeah. um, so, certain things like that, right? But you're still going to deal with ignorance. And you're still going to deal with people just doing the like, you know, the, 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 the white, left to white people's own devices. Not, like Ibro said, not needing to know what your experience is. I'm sure you just had a lot of situations where you weren't understood. Like from the most basic sort of things where people say things and you're like, mm. you know what I mean? Yeah. What I guess what I'm asking is, mm -hmm. did you deal with a lot of outright racism or was it more like implicit and a lack of understanding or a combination of both? Oh, I would just say it was a combination. I feel like similar to, I feel life, it's, it's a combination. It depends on where you're at and what space you're in, but both. <laughs> which is easier, which is harder to deal with? For me, I think the outright racism is actually more difficult for me to deal with because I can have more fun with implicit <laughs> racism. I feel like I can find ways to respond back that also makes you uncomfortable without being extremely direct. Right. Um, and that's that's kind of fun. <laughs> right. And maybe it can be effective, right? Maybe it can make someone actually think. Yeah. And it's just it's just like I can just go about my day. But outright racism, I'm like going to get upset. And then I have to temper emotions and like find the correct way to respond to this, depending on the setting and like who's around. Um, yeah. Um, I, the work of becoming a professional soccer player. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Um, I'm sure there's a mom or, you know, dad or both or family, a young kid who loves the sport. Uh, but. You know, they're on their travel team and the parents are driving them a thousand miles a weekend. And it's like, we got to be in Philly and then we got to drive to Baltimore oh, and then we're on our school team and we're on our this team. And I know some parents who have this struggle. Right. Um, but what if you were all of that adds up and is important. But when it came time for you to leave Harvard and become a professional soccer player. What was that actual work? What was the, who did you need? What trainers, agents, relationships? What is it? Honestly, so I didn't, I begged my dad to go pro. He said no, <laughs> like multiple times. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, why, I, why, why didn't you? I had student loans. Harvard doesn't give out nope. athletic scholarships. <laughs> my dad was like, you have student loans and you're gonna go play pro, pro women soccer and not get paid anything. He goes, absolutely not, it's crazy. <laughs> Right. So I entered the draft without him knowing <laughs> and I got drafted and I was like, I'm just, I'm going to try this. Like I want to do it. And he was like, you're supposed to be a doctor <laughs> and I'm not a doctor. <laughs> not uh, now. Not now. No, no, I won't be a doctor. And you will not be no, a doctor. We, we won't be doing that. But no, I, uh, I entered the draft and he's like obsessed with it now. He loves it. He's so proud of me. He come, he drives up to every game all the way from Maryland, wow. like sits in the stands. He has the best time, but I didn't have an agent. I didn't have a personal trainer. I didn't have any of that. I only had like a bag of balls and a coach who would meet me at 5 a.m. before classes. And yeah. that was about it. But the 5 a.m. part, I mean, it's a real thing. Oh, how many days it is a, week? a real thing. I mean, whenever we could get the space, maybe like three days a week, uh, football would go into the bubble. There's a bubble at Harvard in the winter and there's this, you have to get the field space and they would go in at 
five thirty. So I would try to get in there around like five a.m. like on the field. You get thirty minutes. Yeah, just thirty minutes with my coach. And how 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 great a player were you at Good Counsel? I was the best at Good Counsel. <laughs> well, I was going to say, I imagine you also dominated. Yeah. And so you worked pretty hard then too. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I I mean. At the same time, it's not really work, you know, when you when love, you love it, it. Yeah, yeah you, when you, th- like, that's what I'm talking about when I say everyone on the women's national team is built differently. Like, you're, like, you're built for it. Like, you want it. You like want to run, you want to work, you, you want to play, it. you're out there all day, every yeah. day, yeah. Like, it's not, it's not hard. That's why when you talk about, like, athletes being disciplined, I have this kind of, like, philosophical thing that I battle with. I'm like, how disciplined are you when you love it? Like it's not it's not hard for you to get up in the morning and go do that. It's not hard for you to eat right because for you it's worth it. Like that's not like actually a true test of discipline. Is it hard to miss out on fun with your friends when you know you got to get up for a game and you can't go out and drink and party like everybody else? No, for me it, for me it wasn't. I mean, for some people it might be, but that's again like the, I I live to to score goals. Like I want to score. I want to be out there. So that that wasn't hard either. And. I mean, your friends are always there. <laughs> if they're your friends. If they're your friends. Listen, right. that's a whole other discussion. We can, we can have that like yeah. another day. <laughs> so this regular season finale could be, hopefully it won't be, but could be the send-off for Allie Krieger. Sure. Why would you say that? <laughs> well, 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 could be. I said could be. Hopefully it won't be. But either way, you'll be seeing that. If it's not then, it's it, it'll be. We, even if you win the championship, it's soon. Oh, um, gosh. <laughs> so, well, no. It won't be. It but won't we know be. she's retiring after this season. Okay, yeah, sure, everyone. No, she wants you, she's trying to get I know, you I know. optimistic. So after y'all yeah. win the championship, it's going to yes. be the end for yeah, Allie Krieger. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> what has it been like? I'm sure she's someone you looked up to for a long time. What is it like getting to play with her? And, and, and what can you say about the career she's had? Oh, my gosh. I mean, I shared this story recently, but Allie presented me with my high school All-Met Player of the Year award. Whoa. Yeah. Is she from oh, the DMV, too? She's from the DMV. Oh, wow. So, like, when I was in high school, like, they were like, Allie Krieger's giving you your award. I was like, oh, my gosh, it's so sick. <laughs> <laughs> and now she's my teammate, and now she's my friend, and I just, I adore her. She's she's one of the best people I've met in this industry, and I'm, I'm just so thankful to celebrate her in this way. Well, that's so cool. Did you, feel, did you feel welcomed in? Like, she's among, of course, the all-time greats of the women's national team. Did you generally feel welcomed in by this sort of legendary group? When I first got there? Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Took a little time? It, it, takes some, it used to take some time. It used to take some time. It's a hard environment, and everyone's just, you know, it's cutthroat. Like everyone's just trying to... Well, they to also look. are looking at you like, all right, rookie. Let's see what you got. Exactly. Don't exactly. come in here with your little newbie bullshit. We got work to do. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Until she starts flaming everyone up. She said, she said hello. <laughs> right, right. That's nice. Oh, hello is nice. Hey, that's good. Don't fuck up. <laughs> Oh, that's super, that's, super, that's super cool. That is super cool. Well, good luck uh, this Sunday. Thank you. Go I out, get yourself it. a win. Don't leave it to ties and gold gold total. No, don't well, worry come, about that. Come see it. Come see it. What's, what time is the game? What time is the game? Five. <laughs> Five o'clock this Sunday. Red it's at Bull uh, Red Bull Arena out there in Jersey right next to Newark, Harrison, New Jersey. Uh, the Kansas City Current will be in town. And this is Midge Purse. Thank you, guys. Thank you for coming. Thanks for making time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shout to Gotham FC. 